So you want to include footnotes and endnotes in your Microsoft Word document. I want my first footnote here. So I place my flashing cursor there. I go to the References tab and I'll click on Insert Footnote. Now it takes you to the bottom of the page and you can see you have that number one there. And that corresponds to the number it's placed where you had your flashing cursor. So the idea here is that you just write some text corresponding to that footnote. If I go back up to where that number has been placed within my document and hover over it, I can see the footnote text in a little screen tip. Now, if I wanted to place a second footnote in the document, I'll do the same thing. I click where I want the footnote number. I go to insert footnote and I get a corresponding number at the bottom of the page. So I write in my text for that footnote. And if I go back up to where my flashing cursor was, there you'll see your footnote number. And if you hover over it, you get the footnote text in a little screen tip. Now what happens if I place a footnote between these two existing footnotes? Say I place a footnote here, insert footnote. And what you'll see is that it renumbered the second footnote. That now becomes footnote three. And it's placed a blank line between the two existing footnote text areas at the bottom of the page. And this one would obviously become footnote three text. Now, if I deleted footnote two, and I would do that by going up to where the number is, selecting the number and delete it. You see now that what was footnote three has become footnote two. So it's renumbered this footnote automatically. And it's also deleted that footnote text from the bottom of the page. So that now becomes footnote two. Now, let me just undo that. I'm going to reinstate that footnote just by undoing the deletion. So I now have three footnotes. And what happens if I move this sentence with its footnote to a different area of the document? So I've selected it and I'm going to cut it, Control X on my keyboard. You can see it no longer shows the text for that footnote at the bottom of the page. And if I paste that sentence into this page, then that footnote now appears and has been renumbered at the bottom of this page. So this now becomes footnote three. So you can see that all the numbering automatically updates when you either insert footnotes between footnotes, delete footnotes, or move footnotes. Now if I just go to the top of the document. You can easily navigate between your footnotes using this next footnote button. So if I click on it, it will find the first footnote and then click on it again, it will find the second footnote. And then again, it will jump to the second page where the third footnote is. A quick way to jump to the actual text for the footnote is once you've navigated to that footnote is to click on the show notes button. OK, let's look at some other settings for footnotes. I'm going to go back to the top of the document and then I'm going to click on this little button here just to the right of the footnotes group on your ribbon. Now, what you can do here is change the number formatting for your footnotes. So by default, it's just normal numbering one, two, three, but I could change it to letters, for example, ABC. And if I click on apply, you'll now see that the footnotes use letters rather than numbers. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to have different footnote settings within different sections of your document. I actually have two sections within my document. All the text under the first heading is in section one, but all the text under the second heading is in section two. Now you can see which section particular content is in by looking on the status bar. You see down here it says section two and if i click above this heading this is in section one now if you can't see that section information on your status bar just right click on the status bar and select this option here section and then you should see that information you can also view section breaks which create the different sections by turning show hide on so if i click on that and then scroll down my document, you can see I've got a section break here on the page before this second heading. Now, if you want to create your own section breaks, let me show you how to do that. So I wanted 
this part of the document to be in its own section, what I would do is I'd click before the heading, I'd go to layout, breaks, next page, section break. So now this part of the document is in section three. So each section within your document can have different footnote settings. So if we go up to section one, we've been using lowercase letters to number or letter our footnotes. Say if I wanted different settings for section two. So if I insert a footnote somewhere in section two, interestingly, it starts to use numbers rather than letters. So let me just write my text for this footnote. Now say I wanted the numbering actually to be lettering like it is in the previous section. Well, what I'd need to do is go up to the footnotes and endnotes dialog box launcher. And here I can specify numbering format per section. You can see it says apply changes to this section. So I could say I want to use lowercase letters. Click on apply and you can see it's now using a lowercase letter. There's a little D there. But equally, I could change the numbering format for this particular section. So I could say I want Roman numerals, click on apply. So although I'm using Roman numerals in this section, it's still using lettering in the previous section. The other thing you'll notice, and it may be quite hard to see unless I zoom in, is that the numbering has continued. From C, I now have four as my footnote number. Now what I can do is restart the numbering in each section. So if I go back to this dialog box, I can change the numbering setting here to restart each section. If I click on apply, I now have a Roman numeral one at the beginning of this second section. Alternatively, if you know you want the same footnote settings across the whole document, irrespective of which section you're in, then if you go back to the dialog box, you could choose a numbering format and then apply changes to the whole document. Now, my footnote four is using that numbering, but it's restarted the numbering. So I need to go back into the dialog box and select continuous and then click on apply. And you can see now that the whole document uses the same numbering format. Now, another setting I wanted to explore is where you have footnotes within columns. So I'm gonna go down to the third section in my document. And I'm going to put this text in columns. Go to the layout tab and I'm going to put it in two columns. Okay, so I'm going to put a footnote in the first column. And then I'm going to put a footnote in the second column. Now I can change the layout of the footnotes within these columns. If I go back to my footnotes dialog box, by default, the layout matches the section layout. So I've got two columns, so it displays the footnotes in two columns. If I wanted to display the footnotes in one column, from this dropdown list, I choose one column. And then if I click on apply, you can see it puts the second footnote underneath the first. Okay. That's everything I wanted to show you regarding footnotes. Now let's move on to working with endnotes. So endnotes appear at the end of the document rather than at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to insert my first endnote at the end of the first paragraph. So I go to the references tab, insert endnote, and you can see it's taken me to the bottom of my document. So wherever I place an endnote, the endnote text will appear at the bottom of my document. Now, if I go to the footnotes and endnote dialog box, you can use this convert button to convert all footnotes to endnotes or all endnotes to footnotes or swap footnotes and endnotes. So let's try this option, convert all footnotes to endnotes. If I click on OK and then close, you can see now that all of the footnotes have become endnotes at the end of my document. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.